I know you all love Wagyu, and boy, oh boy, do I have something special today. I always feel bad talking about it for so long and just making you wait. I kind of just want to drag it right on screen right now and show you. But what I have today is truly something special. I was lucky enough to visit Hokkaido, Japan several years ago. The food there was the best I've ever had anywhere in the world. And what's exciting to me is that the piece of Wagyu we have today comes directly from Hokkaido, Japan. It's about 10 pounds and it is special. What we have here is an A5 Japanese Wagyu Hokkaido strip loin. And this thing is pretty big. But what's really amazing to me is that marbling that you can already see through the plastic without even taking it off. I mean, just spinning it around to the other side and letting you look at how beautiful this thing is. I myself can't help but start to salivate at the thought of eating this. To portion it off, you'd slice it across this way, getting nice cuts just like this. What I'm holding right here is about $1,000 retail, and you can imagine you'd pay a heck of a lot more in a restaurant for something like this too. As with all my Wagyu in my medium rare series, I get it from the Wagyu shop that sends me this from Japan. Again, I'm not paid to tell you about this at all, actually. I'm literally just telling you where I'm sourcing my Wagyu. And the truth is, buying a nice piece in bulk like this is a heck of a lot better than buying small pieces, in my opinion. That is, if you're actually going to be able to eat this much. Perhaps even more exciting than the actual Wagyu itself is what we're going to do with it today. Well, I shouldn't say today, because it's going to take two months. 60 days. We're going to butter age it. And we're going to do that, of course, by making homemade butter and allowing it to rest in the fridge for those 60 days to really develop more flavor. Then we'll come back, sear it up, and talk about what it tastes like. So let's make that butter. Now butter is very simple to make. All you're doing is adding a bunch of heavy cream or heavy whipping cream into a big mixer until it reaches whipped cream and actually goes past that stage. Because we actually need so much butter here, I'm gonna do this in two separate stages. So to start, I'm simply gonna close this down and let it go. So it's gonna eventually reach this whipped cream phase where it starts to actually obviously turn into regular whipped cream, right? But we wanna actually take it a step past that. So as you watch here, it's gonna slowly start to sort of curdle a little bit. And we're gonna get to a point where we've over whipped it. Basically where we've turned it into sort of curds and wet. So in watching this, you're actually watching two processes. One is how to make butter, the other actually how to make buttermilk. You're gonna to start to see it turn a little bit yellow. And that's gonna be when we get to get our butter and then our buttermilk seeping out of that butter. We're sort of agitating it, just over mixing it. And as it spins, it gets more and more and more yellow in here. And then it'll start spraying me because that buttermilk is essentially the consistency of water and will splat all over the place. And at this point here, we finally reach the butter stage. But we'll continue mixing for just a second to let it clump up even more. And as you can see now, we have our butter and our buttermilk very, very separated. And if I reach in here and just grab a big clump of that butter, you can see how simple that is. And I can tell you right now, if you were to just eat this with a little bit of salt in there, it'd be the best butter you've ever had. After quite some time, we've finally gotten our second round of butter here. And we're gonna wait until it's all clumped up around the whisk attachment and then I'll lift it back. And you can see there that all the butter is clumped up around this one area. Now our next step is to press out the remaining butter. Now the main thing we're doing at this point in the process is spanking our butter. And I'm not kidding when I say that. You basically want to spank out all of the buttermilk. So what I'm going to do is move a little bit by bit at a time in batches over to our finalized butter bowl right here. And when I do this, I'm just going to press it out really well with my hands and with my wooden spoon here. And each time I pick up some of this butter and squeeze it, you're going to see that a bunch of buttermilk still drips out of it. And our goal here is to get out all of that buttermilk. <laughs> I'm going to knead my butter now like I would a piece of bread, spanking it and pressing out all of that buttermilk. Butter, what what have you done? Butter. <laughs> Things are getting weird up in here. Once that butter's done, we're gonna get a nice piece of parchment and lay the butter down across the parchment paper. This, of course, is the step in the process where we're gonna be coating this entire piece of beef in that amazing butter. First, I'll flatten it out on the bottom and make a nice wall on the bottom for that meat to rest. Then, once it's got a nice base to rest on, I'll flip this upside down and smack it down. We can't forget to take off this piece of paper that soaks up all that moisture on the meat. Then, we're simply gonna wrap up the sides and smooth that butter all the way around this beef. This seriously looks so cool. And it's definitely one of the more unique things I've done in this kitchen. So I'm happy to have you here watching and experimenting on this with me. I mean, think about how cool it is that you get to hang out right alongside me for all these culinary adventures. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. We'll continue pressing all this butter, making sure it's flush up against this beef until there's a thick and even coating, almost like frosting. I mean, it would make sense that the butter looks like buttercream frosting, especially because buttercream is made from butter. Once this is all coated, we place this in the fridge for 60 days. I might look a little different by then, so I'll see you when I see ya. Now, we've waited 60 days, and I know you want me to take that Wagyu out of the fridge, and I'm gonna run over there and do it right now. In fact, I can't wait, but one really fast thing before I do that. Please go right down and toss a little like on the video. I'll explain more why later, but it helps so, so much. So I'm gonna just give you a quick second to tap that like button. Y'all set? If so, let me grab that Wagyu. 
The time has finally come. We've been waiting 60 days for this. This right here is a 60 day butter aged Wagyu. And again, it's crazy how much time has passed. I mean, we've been waiting for this thing for so incredibly long. You can see that that butter is almost cracking. A little bit of those beautiful red juices are flowing through this thing. Down here, I see a hole where it's dripped out. And on the other side, I can see that some of it has actually caked up here. Eat it, eat it or you're fired. But there's one thing that I've been waiting to do for very long. And unfortunately, I have to do it off camera. Cut the cameras for a second. I gotta stop it. I said cut the camera. To start, I'm gonna peel all of that wrap off the bottom of our wagon. This thing is extraordinarily slippery. To start, I wanna slice it right down the middle to not keep you waiting. And I can't even use my special old fancy Japanese knife. No, I'm gonna use this bad boy. So to start, I'm gonna slice right down the center of this Wagyu. I'm gonna be honest, it's harder to cut through than Wagyu normally is. And frankly, that's no shocker to me. I'm sure that the butter aging has made it quite tough inside at some parts, but I'll push and ease that knife all the way through to cut this clean off. Interestingly enough, I'm hearing some rather strange crunching sounds from here, and the smell is actually quite pungent, but it looks like we've chopped through it. So without further ado, let's open this bad boy. Oh, wow, wee, look at that. <gasps> now it's time to take off that butter. So I'm gonna start by seeing what I can actually just peel off by myself. Cause really this butter is just a great big crust. As you can see, some of these pieces I can just take off in massive clumps. You can definitely try to save the butter if you want. Although it does probably get a bunch of that mold that you may not necessarily want to eat. So I'll let you make that decision yourself. I'll flip this piece around and peel off this massive piece on the top too. It's actually quite nice that it comes off this easily. But when it starts to get really funky and cool is when you look at the top of the meat. As you can see, clearly it aged in from the outside, which is what we expect. And when I eventually flip it over, this whole top here is a funky color. And we're gonna want to carve some of this off. I'm gonna peel off this last section here, noticing that pattern that we get on that homemade butter, as well as some of those weird colors that we get, clearly that have come right off this meat. And then we have our first hunk of butter aged meat, which if you look carefully, and if we compare this to the start, when this wasn't coated in butter and hadn't been aged, clearly it's a different color. For now, I'm gonna set this aside and bring this other piece in, doing the same exact process to this one here. Once that second piece is done, it's time to trim it up. Like I said, we need to take off those bits on the bottom that you see there, mainly really just trim down this part, because we don't want to eat this and find any other rancid bits that are gonna be a little bit too moldy or blue cheesy or exotic for us to taste. I'll start with the easiest section here by trimming off a nice little bit from the bottom. And when you see this, don't worry. None of this is gonna to go to waste because we can reduce down a bunch of this fat and use it for anything else. It's more just that we don't wanna eat any meat that's kind of gone bad. Before I go further, take a good hard look at that marbling. That's something that you can never see anywhere else. This is Japanese Wagyu at its finest. Now, I definitely still see some bits right here. So I'm gonna come down with my knife and cut off this corner right here. Again, you can hopefully tell that this isn't necessarily something you want to eat. Now we definitely want to follow the edge when we trim here because we have some color up along the side. So I'll start at an angle with my knife and come right around the edge of our piece of Wagyu. It looks here as if I want to trim just a little bit more off, but at that point it looks nice and clean here. Now in terms of the fat cap, that probably did a pretty good job protecting the meat over those two months, but I am just going to trim just a little bit of this off regardless. I don't need that much fat anyways. And now for these corners and edges that still look a little bit off, we're just going to go ahead and do some finishing touches. And now that I've finished trimming, I wanna show you what it looks like with the final loss all piled next to it. Obviously, some of these pieces have gone way too far. And these, I may toss away. Others, however, are definitely perfectly okay to render off the fat. And who doesn't love some Wagyu fat on just about anything? Now, as for this beautiful bad boy, it still leaves us with plenty of beef to work with, and this is only the half of it. So let's do the same with that other piece. While we wait for that Wagyu in the fridge for just a moment, so it can firm up again before we cut it, because as you know, Wagyu is a lot of fat. I'm gonna start with a little bit of vinegar into our boiling water, which helps so that the whites of the eggs don't run if they crack open while boiling. And then I have a nice selection of beautiful farm fresh eggs that I'm gonna slowly drop into our boiling water, one at a time so that they don't crack. I'm sure many people already know this, but a nice soft boiled egg yolk goes really, really well with a good old piece of Wagyu or regular steak. It looks like we already got our example for a running yolk, but as you can see it doesn't go all over the place. It sticks to the egg. That's what the vinegar does. For now, these eggs are gonna go for about six minutes and nine seconds. And I know it's a silly time, but I showed you the same thing in my ramen video. And did that not turn out perfectly? While those eggs are going, let's make a quick ice bath, which will prepare us for the moment they're done because this is a time sensitive thing. Soft boiled eggs are no joke, people. At this point, we're ready to take out those eggs. So drop them immediately into that ice bath. You know, funnily enough, I stole these eggs from my roommate and usually he's the one stealing food from me. So it was really nice to see a change in the dynamic for this time around. 
Like I said, that vinegar trick works pretty well, huh? At this point, let those eggs cool down for a while. As long as they've halted cooking, we're good. Now, it looks like we're ready to cut into these bad boys. I'm gonna set this first one aside because the way I wanna cook this is the way I like to cook Wagyu most of the time, in nice cubes. First, I'm gonna go ahead and slice down right through the middle of this piece. This will give us two nice hunks of Wagyu, which give an absolutely stunning shot. And I have to say, it looks a tad bit, are you laughing? You're actually fired. Like, I don't touch it, don't touch that. And now I'm gonna cut it into nice cubes, making absolutely sure that they're all very similar in size. To me, there's just no better way to cook Wagyu than cutting it into nice perfect cubes because it allows you to have really nice control over every single piece you're cooking. And now once they're all cut into nice cubes, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of my flaky salt, which again, we're gonna have available in limited quantities really soon. And then I'll roll these cubes all the way around in that salt. Salt is the only thing we need to use when seasoning this Wagyu. All that butter aged flavor is gonna really speak for itself. And there's no need Need to ruin that by putting all sorts of seasoning because this Wagyu, it has the seasoning. They almost now look like we've covered them in Sour Patch Kid dust, but they're ready to cook. And now I'll crank up the heat on my carbon steel pan. And if I want to, I can very lightly kiss it with some of that Wagyu fat that we tossed aside. And then we sear our Wagyu cubes. And once we've achieved that beautiful golden brown crust, we'll flip them over. Now we'll leave these again for a few minutes on this side until they're complete. Now that these are done cooking, because they are butter aged, I do wanna add a little bit of butter to these just to bring everything back together given what we did. I always like thinking about this sort of thing with food and this after all is butter aged Wagyu. So why not add a little bit of butter back into it once you've finished cooking it? We don't want it to lose touch with where it came from. Who doesn't love a little bit of butter painting porn? Nope. At this point, we can crack open those eggs and hope that we nailed that perfect soft boil egg. But trust me, if you followed the six minute, nine second rule, you killed it. You simply crushed it. But either way, this is always gonna be a moment of truth. So let's cut open into this bad boy and appreciate that delicious yolky runniness. Oh baby. Now it's time at this point to cut open one of these beautiful cubes. But first, listen. We absolutely killed the crust on this Wagyu, but more importantly, when I open it up, we have that nice red Wagyu, which we do not want to cook any more than this. And you can tell that it's extremely juicy with a nice crust on it. Now, I can't really help myself, so I'm gonna cut in and take a bite right now. Holy crap. I'm gonna feed you this piece of Wagyu, and if you eat it, you're not fired. To close things out, I wanna sprinkle on a little bit of black flaky salt over each egg, just to get some really nice color and seasoning on there. And then I wanna plunge that beef right into that egg, really mixing it all together for one big delicious Wagyu bite. That right there, I can tell you right now, simply cannot be beat, and I haven't even tasted it. Now I know I've already talked a little bit about the flavor, but I do wanna quickly say right now that that bite was something genuinely and truly special. Let's try it again. It's absurd. Honestly, I don't even know how to react. That aged Wagyu has developed a flavor unlike anything I can describe. It's got these deeper, richer, more developed notes in it with all those same amazing qualities in Wagyu. For instance, you still have that drippy, delicious fat coming off each piece of meat. I mean, if you don't believe me, just tell me what that is. Each bite is an explosion of flavor, coating your entire mouth in that amazing fat. And the great part about this fatty Wagyu is that it's so well marbled that as that flavor melts and goes around your mouth, it travels through every possible taste bud and gives you every bit of all of that flavor. That, to me, is the coolest part. Now, if be nice if I can compare butter age with regular Wagyu in this instance, but what I can tell you is this. The same way you see those changes on the Wagyu and you taste them all very clearly. The way I describe it is like this. Aged Wagyu is far richer than regular Wagyu in the sense that if given two pieces, you would want to have a little bit less of that aged Wagyu. The same way that if you sat a piece of Wagyu next to a piece of regular steak, you'd want to have a little bit less Wagyu. It's just too rich, too much of a treat. What I will say is this was a very fun experiment and I hope to do more like this. What do you want me to age next? My hands are all oily and I've got some Wagyu to finish. But I wanna say thank you for watching. Please, again, toss a like on the video. It helps us so incredibly much and the amount of time and effort and energy that goes into these videos is a lot and it adds up really, really fast. Consider all the food, all the dishes, all the filming and all the editing. And all we ask from you is a simple like on the video. Again, I appreciate it. In the meantime, lots of fun videos coming up as always. So make sure you smack that subscribe button. And if you're not part of that notifications game, yet, you're really missing out. Again, I got some more Wagyu to eat, so I'll see you later.